to Marketing Through Your Rear View Mirror. Good day, Chuck. How you doing? Good day, Lori, and welcome everybody on this chilly December day. Uh, we're almost, what is it, 20 days away from the winter equinox when the world will have the weather being warmer. Um, and everybody's looking forward to heading off to Christmas. You've been to Grandma's house at Thanksgiving. And the topic today is marketing uh, and your rearview mirror. And again, uh, the, the gimmick of the rearview mirror, of course, comes into place in a lot of different ways. Uh, we talk about, well, what's the point of a rearview mirror? You think about uh, marketing, we ought to be going forward. Well, a rearview mirror makes you go, lets you see where you're going backwards. However, it also lets you see where you've been. And again, the roadkill, do you have any roadkill in your rearview mirror? And if we're talking about marketing to really make it work, what we're talking about is knowing what we did with our marketing efforts. How can we set up systems? How can we set up procedures? to capture the information, okay, capture the information in the system to be able to analyze what marketing we're doing. And again, we can spend all day talking about learning from history and how important it is to know uh, evaluation, but basically we're going to take a minute to look at some of the myths about marketing analysis. We'll have a poll in a minute where we'll try to find out, we'll separate the serious marketers out here, and Lori and I will know when we're outgunned. But we'll talk about some of the myths that we think fall into the marketing analysis side. Uh, trying to give you some ideas about where you start, talk about what we think are some of the key impact elements here, uh, give you what we would, uh, again, our experience shows as numbers to count on, uh, and again, give you tools you can use. As I mentioned uh, in this, this is focused for clients and customers using Student Manager and AceWeb, but uh, we've invited guests who may not be current customers. And we'll try to reference points that you can use in whatever system you're using, whether it's homegrown, perhaps a campus system, or even a competitor's. And then certainly that last part is the lather, rinse, repeat mode. So. Um, actually, right now, Lori, I'm going to ask you to give us the uh, poll about who we've got in the audience today, who we've got signing up here, and kind of what your role is within your unit. So if you'd like to take that over here. Alrighty. And what is your primary role? And we ask you only to select one. People already going at it, so that's very good. good and job. while people are voting, Chuck, let's remind everybody that today they are listening in listen-only mode, so they can make noise and crunch on a bag of chips or a few cookies if they'd like. Right. Don't bother Smack it. on lunch if you're in uh, if you're in uh, the Western Rocky Mountain time zone. The Evanston folks, go ahead and meet, munch your potato chips. It won't bother us. So. <laughs> but if you have questions, please enter them in the question answer box. We'll hold most of them until the very end of the webinar when we'll have plenty of time to talk about questions. Sounds good. And, and again, um, the, the whole point of this here is that we're trying to get some eye. OK, let me get the audience view. What are we doing here waiting for the roll? How are we doing on the voting, Lori? We're going to go five, four, three, two, one, and close. And I'll share the results with you. So it okay. looks like we have very few business managers and primarily program managers, coordinators, and program assistants, registrars. How many marketing people on my screen? I've, I've got the minimized screen there. Uh, the looks marketing. like about 16% of our Okay. Audience. All right. All right. Okay. So we've got a few of us, a few folks here that are going that are going to keep us honest. Now I've gotten off of the scope here. All right, am I back? Am I back? back? I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Okay. Uh, the other thing, and if you're new to go to meeting, of course, there is a hide control panel, that little uh, white arrow in the little yellow box in the top left of your routine. That'll, that'll give you a bit more screen view. All right, let's move on, move on. Dispelling the myths. One of the things, and again, no disrespect to marketers, because obviously, to really do a good job of marketing, it certainly does have help to have some statistical chops. Uh, but again, there are ways to use tools built in certainly to the Aceware software that will help you do some analysis, generate some numbers using our tool set 
that can get you some data that you can use to build your program, get better efforts out of your marketing dollars. And again, if you don't have Aceware, uh, there are people presumably in the college within the unit there that you might want to recruit, give you a hand with that uh, to help get some statistics. All right. And in terms of being uber intrusive, I guess this is, this is one of the kind of things, again, as part of the normal registration process, we ought to be able to present to students, to our customers, opportunities to share information with us without us getting into the Census Bureau five pages of questions kind of an element. So, all right, moving on. Um, Again, what is marketing? There are a lot of elements about marketing. And again, to the 16% who are bona fide marketers, you know you've got product and place and promotion and price, and you've got the, the build up and doing data analysis at the front end. We're really going to look today primarily at the evaluation part. And that's the whole rear view mirror. I said it again looking at what happened with our marketing, how we captured that, and what were the results. So, and it happens, it begins with it, and it's all about the data. Any of you old enough to remember the Bill Clinton years, it was like it's all about the economy, stupid, in terms of the issues of the day. Well, for marketers, for continuing educators who were trying to analyze their marketing efforts, it's all about recording the data. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan, and I'm getting to be a big fan of SlideShare, and I want to do this a shout out. Uh, if you don't uh, subscribe to the SlideShare update, I get no commission out of this, uh, but it is to me, in my thinking, a great way to kind of see what are current trends, current um, what, what people are saying, and it's a great resource for picking up slides. Uh, I should have stolen a lot more slides from the ones on SlideShare. But this was one of the top trending slide presentations on SlideShare. And basically, it's, it's right here. Let me try to get to my successful marketers. And basically, the idea is by analyzing your data, you can really enhance your marketing efforts. So again, and so this is what we're saying, better marketing analytics can improve your returns 10 to 20 percent. And I would say that for continuing educators, uh, it'd be even more than that. All right, so let's start in the beginning. Where does this all start? It starts with capturing the data. You've got to be able to capture the data. And again, with manager and student manager and Aceware, we've got tools to do that. If you don't, you need to make sure that you've got somebody in the shop that can help you with that. You've got to have the tools to analyze it. And again, uh, you Aceware users are lucky we've got those tools. You're going to learn about them today. And certainly the last part, and again, the will to get her done, um, the definition of genius, uh, the definition of success in marketing, it always is back to that idea. It's 1% inspiration. It's 99% perspiration. There generally isn't an automatic, never mind what Salesforce might promise you, there's no automatic way to track things. You have got to go in, do the data analysis, look at the numbers, try to make sense of the, how those relate to your programs and where you want to take your program. So again, the will that's involved in this is really a critical part of getting anything done. So. Who are the players in our marketing uh, roadmap here? Certainly number one is the student, the client, the learner, what do you want to call them? Number two is the product, whether you're selling conferences, classes, workforce training, online classes. You've got the product out here. You've got the student over here. And marketing, of course, as you marketers know, is the interplay between the two. But what we're looking at today is how did they find us? What was the thing we did that made them go to our site, call us up, fill out the form, go to the website, put down their money for this class? So the who business, who the students are and how did they find you? Uh, the enrollee so refresh is really, really slow. We're still at the in the beginning slide. We have not moved on again. 
Oh kind of my so goodness! We, your your presentation whoa, is wonderful, but whoa, we're not seeing the graphics whoa. that go with it. Well, I uh, in the beginning the the that's been. Let me try to see that I'm not Alt Tab here that I've not got my slide off. Hang on a second, guys. My screen is showing. Yeah. I wonder what the refresh is. So you're still at you're still not getting a refresh on that because yeah. I'm clear over as you know several screens down the road. Yeah, I don't think it was just me, but it's definitely not. Other people are reporting that you, we're still at the same spot. Let me just try. Yeah, because uh, oh, that now you're at the players. Wow. Okay. Well, if you guys don't mind, oh, network connection has been reestablished. If you don't mind, let me kind of just get you a little bit back in terms of. Okay, so I guess we were only a couple off on that. Um, all right. Let's see if we can get the beginning. We were talking about the capturing the data, the players in the system. Now, are we popping up? How do they find us? Yellow, yellow arrow. Still on the Adam and Eve. In the beginning with the Apple. Yeah. Okay. Goodness now gracious. we're at the players. Okay. And, and I'm right. also getting a message about network. Network being, connection yeah. issues. So our uh, go to meeting may or go to webinar may be having a month. So I'll hang in there, guys, or hang in there, participants. We'll uh, we'll stay with that. All right. So now we're moving over to the enrollee, who they are, and how did you find us? And we're talking about how do you capture the data about the enrollee that can help you analyze your your uh, your marketing. Well, number one, the key element of tracking the data, whether you're doing these with a uh, phone in, walk in, mail ins, and you have staff who are entering the data uh, and you're, you're typing it in by hand or if you're on the website and they're at the www.youruniversity filling it in, what you want to do is provide an opportunity to capture what is the source of that name coming into your system. So what you want to find out is how did the student find out about University of your name, and that's what we call in in Aceware source codes. I'm going to go ahead and roll to the live system. So we're now going to run to uh, run to student manager, and we're going to look up a name record. Well, we're going to go look up the source code. Yeah, Tate, slow down. Look up the name record. We're going to get to Mr. Havlicek. And so the source code for Havlicek. Now, are you at um, are you at are you at me? Are you together, Lori? Yes, you're doing much okay, better. Okay, we're now popping up. The idea of the source code on a name record is that you want to be able to present to your staff <clears throat> and to your students on a website what are the promotional options, informational options that you are using for marketing and encourage them as a student on the web to fill it out and really work at your staff, if you've got back-end staff, or back, back office staff, who are doing the data to record that. <clears throat> now, uh, in the Aceware model, you've got source codes that are on the name record, which is really the original source that the name came to the system. And then they'll be at the registration level, which we'll talk about in a second, how they got to the registration. Now, in Student Manager, if you've not been doing uh, source code tracking, you do that by going into source tracking codes. So in the codes table, which is the little button up here, we go down to name source codes, source tracking codes. Are we, you staying with me, Lori? Yes. Good. Okay. And basically now we're looking at putting in here what are the different marketing elements? So if we had put an advertisement in the ACHE journal, we would record a code for that particular advertisement promotion. We would indicate generally perhaps a date for it, how much it cost, and if it was a printed item. Was that me or you, Lori? A little scratchiness. I didn't hear it, so I don't know. Okay, we're good. Um, but if it was a mailing, you could put in the number of brochures. Now again, in Student Manager and AceWeb, if you're using AceWeb, 
you AceWeb, which is the web publishing component versus the back-end staff admin component, you can choose to make a tracking code available on the web or not. Generally, the rule here for student manager users is that you might have more detailed tracking codes for back office use than you would for the web. Trying to get a student to remember what day it is sometimes versus which one of the different wonderful marketing pieces you use to reach them uh, is probably a bit of a challenge. So you might want to try to keep, keep your web options a lot more simple, a little cleaner. So again, you're basically following along billboard ads, cable TV ads, a brochure, so you've got a, so many brochures you've sent out. Now, uh, email blast. Now, now somebody says, well, what do you mean there's a cost for email? I can send my emails out for free. Well, obviously sending the email out is free, but somebody presumably has gone to some effort to create the marketing code, identify the groups of students within your system uh, to, to send that email blast out to, and whereas doing that inside Aceware only takes a couple of seconds to generate the list, the thought and, and basically doing the planning to decide what target group you're aiming at takes time. So I really, really want you, um, even though you're doing, if you would, internal labor or internally developed promotions where you're not paying a third party, put in a resource value. So if you have a staff member spending three days working up this email blast and fine-tuning the HTML or the, the text precisely, what you want to do is put in some value for the cost of that promotion. Because that's the only way then we can really do the evaluation part at the back end. All right, so that is the source code on the name record. And so on the web, again, when you're on the website, the source code, and that's the same place. Now, kind of going back to name information. Now, besides the source code, um, Student Manager offers you the ability to store lots and lots of data. Uh, organization code, occupation code, invite them to do interest codes, to do a birthday, to do a gender. Again, uh, my feeling about asking data, it's always this dance between how much you need or how much you'd like to have versus how much you need. And your thing to watch for is that if you ask for too much data, and I'm going to back up to the web example, uh, if you ask for too much data, you may have people say, well, forget that place. I'm going to go down to the neighboring continuing ed group and sign up. They're not that nosy. Uh, so again, the idea is trying to balance how much you need uh, or how much you'd like versus how much you need and how much you're going to use. Uh, my approach in terms of uh, how to evaluate that is to ask for only what you will use, and if you ask for it, use it. And, and again, it's not a use it or lose it. But use it or get it to heck off your web form. If you're doing a web form, use it or get it off your printed application form if you're still doing some paper printed application forms. Worry, I'm going to stop. And, and again, invite attendees. If you've got questions, you've got disagreements, send a note to Lori, and I will, um, I will be able to. And Lori, I haven't been checking the, the, the notes. Sorry. I'll try to uh, respond to those. Lori will tell me if there's one that's pertinent that she wants to respond to on the spot here. OK, Lori? OK, but I think with your current concept, everybody agrees with you. Yeah, and, and again, that, that's just really good hygiene. It's, it's, it's doing to others kind of thing. OK, now that we've talked about the student, the next part that is this obviously critical part is that transaction. It's that magical point when the student actually signs up for the class. <clears throat> and again, to me, uh, the critical areas there are, again, that tracking code, uh, the fee level, which is part of whatever they order, which is basically, if you would, the price of the product, whether they're buying a high-dollar course or they're buying a $29 one-night seminar. 
or if, if they're a staff member and they're getting a big discount on the program. And then the basic information that comes as part of the registration process, when did they register? Now, uh, on the registration sign up, again, uh, the back office screen and student manager, if you're doing registrations from the staff side, or the registration cart in ACEWEB. And again, the tracking code. Now, for student manager users, try to keep straight. We have the source code on the name record. We have tracking code on the registration record. They're the same codes in the codes table. OK, let me get back to that. So if we go to source code, we have friend, MBA, quick edit website. If we go to the registration, it's the same set of codes. And that's, that's right, because you might have a student who signs up, gets their account. They might create an account because they want to get a mailing list, but they haven't registered for anything yet. And the point of that is that when you have a student who registers for a class, I'm going to get back to the student record. When you have a student that registers for the class, typically their um, source code and their tracking code are going to be the same thing. In other words, the reason why they landed in your database of names is the same reason why they signed up for that particular class. OK, that makes sense. What happens, though, in six months? The next semester, you might send Mr. Havlicek an email saying, Chuck, it was great to have you in class. Here's our spring 2014 classes. And it's an email. So on the spring 2014 class, I might actually be coming in from an email blast. Uh, that it would be the spring 2014 email blast. So that that allows you as a marketer, as the marketer to be for the non-16%, uh, to track what was the promotion for the spring 2014 term that's bringing in your registrations. And so that is your, your kind of interplay between source code and tracking code. All right, again, ditto on the website. Again, you can actually change for each enrollment cart checkout, how did you learn about those courses. Now, let's go in now. We know where the data elements are. We're going to jump into the marketing part. Do I have Forrest spelled right? Is there a spell checker on F-O-R-R, -R, Forrest? It's Forrest Hill, the Forrest Hills people. Uh, five reports that I really kind of think are the critical ones are your marketing analysis, where you do marketing tracking at the uh, program level, where you want to look at all your marketing efforts for a term or a year. Then you can narrow down, you, you, you go down the focus to actual marketing analysis at the class level, where you can do program by program breakouts. Triaging programs, in my opinion, is when you're basically, again, looking at last terms and again, I know the uh, several continuing ed organizations talk about the uh, your stars and your dogs and your uh, you know the, the the good foot soldiers. You know, you've got programs that are really generating high income, others that are doing their part, and others that you really need to look at again, putting them out of their misery. And that's kind of the program analysis uh, in terms of evaluating programs. And then certainly looking at the demographics of your students. Uh, who are those students that we uh, left in our wake as we ran through our marketing for the past year? I keep going back to that rearview mirror, Lori. Any questions, any comments, Lori, that you want to bring up? Nope, not right now. We're Thank good. You. All right, let's take a look at um, the marketing reports that we're talking about. And again, I'm going to start with statistics. If you're a student manager user and you have not discovered statistics, uh, you need to get there. By the way, we've got some great webinars in the webinar archive on the statistics reporting system. So we've got the name record. We're going to go to webinar statistics. We're going to start right out with the tracking codes. <clears throat> we mentioned this is the area that we want to look at what happened to the marketing for what we did this, spring, this last fall. So two types of marketing that we've got available in the tracking code report. One is the tracking across all programs. 
uh, I used to call that the mother of all tracking reports, but that's basically every single registration tied to its tracking code for whatever term you want to report. And we're going to do a summary report, which just gives us numbers, and we're going to do the default report. So getting ready to roll, do we want to look at total due, total paid? We're going to take a look at the entire year of 2013. And it gives us now, and let me see if I can zoom in on that. Here we go. Is that readable, Lori, pretty much? Yes, I think so. All right. Now, what you're aiming for is that in your tracking uh, promotion, now this is, the this is the report of the registrations. In other words, what was the method by which students reported to you or your staff was able to capture how, what particular promotion brought the students in. So we have ACAT journal, 88 registrations, 10%. How much was the total income? We take the promotion cost because you recorded that. And that tells us our return on investment. This is what you take to the bank, kids. Here is how much money you get back for every dollar you spend. So the bulletin board for our 75 bucks, we still got six bucks for every registration, for every dollar we spend on the bulletin board. Now here you go, referred by friend. We put a nominal one dollar because you need a number to divide by. <laughs> Obviously that kind of shows if you can get your students to generate some word of mouth for you, your return on investment is pretty darn good. Um, all right, now I'm, I'm going to stop on this and again ask um, Lori, uh, you've got a, uh, we've got a poll question on the how, what are the ways you use to measure? And uh, I didn't want to, I didn't plan to get into a real technical detail besides what we've covered here, but let's see if you want to post that poll about what techniques you use to measure and track uh, your, your marketing. Okay. And on this one, you may check all that apply. So if you're using more than one method and you want to check one method and other, that would be fine too. We did not put in here an option for seat of my pants. <laughs> well, uh, you know, one is, you know, even if you may not have some systems, just taking a look at numbers, class rosters, roles. And again, if you would, for student manager users or for that matter, data whisperer, yeah, the idea of tracking code recording. If you are using that source code on the name record, if you're using the tracking code, check that number two box, the data whisperer box, because that would be, uh, I would consider that to be certainly a data whisperer effort in terms of tracking that. Now we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you later about whether you go, actually go back in and run these reports, which is the, you, you've got to go in and run the report to be able to get your numbers to appear. All right, so filling out the form, how are we doing on numbers? We're doing very well. We're going to give it five, four, three, two, one, and close the poll. We have pretty good participation in this one. Yeah, too. yeah. And 35% of our people say they study Google, Google Analytics. OK. 19% rely on their data whisperer. 41% say post-program demographic analysis. analysis. Well, yeah. that's good. 54% use other, so. Yeah, the other part. Now, again, I'm a little disappointed in that number two, the green bar, and that, yeah, again, for stu and again, if you're not student manager, use it. Even if you're not, I, I really, 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 um, really, really think that you need to, whoever the you is out there, make sure that you have some mechanism to capture for that registration, again, what was the promotion that brought you? All right, so let's let's go back to you. Am I back? Am I back? You're back. Okay. Um, the other one is statistics tracking, and this is the tree level. I said there was a forest level and a tree level. This is now the tree level. <clears throat> so if you use course number by tracking code, what that will let you do, and we'll get this going for the same time set is to actually show you, broken down by class, what the marketing reporting is. 
Now, this is a hypothetical continuing education conference, and it would be set up as what would be the different promotions to generate the income for this particular conference. So again, if I'm looking at purchase promotions, I'm looking in here at an email blast, and here I have uh, an email blast, which was fairly uh, low cost, generating $177 for every $1, and then the institutional website. Now, of course, those low dollar ones, what you're looking at are things that you're spending big bucks on. If you had to spend several thousand on a mailing, if you spent several thousand on a brochure, uh, you're wanting to know that you're getting your five to one. I think that's kind of industry standard is that you really want a five to one return <clears throat> on investment for marketing um, to be able to, uh, to get those. Now, if you really could get a 60 uh, to one return on a journal ad, you'd be darn sure that you get to the ACHA journal early next year to get your ad space, maybe even do a couple of drops because that's pretty darn good uh, response. All right, questions, comments, Lori? We good? I think we're good. Okay. So those were the two that related to marketing analysis of the tracking codes, which is really kind of directly addresses the rear view mirror. How did the marketing efforts we do pan off? pan out? How did they deliver for us? One of the other things, though, and now we're kind of moving a little bit beyond the marketing, uh, specific marketing, but looking at the people in the programs, and that is analyzing the characteristics of the people that we serve in the programs. This begins to get a little bit more detailed into really um, needing to do some thinking, needing to do a little bit of extra work. Well, let's take a look at it. Number one is demographic summary reports. Uh, the demographic summary reports in Student Manager allow you to take <clears throat> any field from the names table, occupation code, organization code, interest code, firm, city, state, zip. You want to do zip code analysis, you can do that. County, sex, ethnicity, education level. Even do it on the basis of their age. And decide where are your people coming from. So one of the examples might be what you'd recommend is that if you've got a locally based program, <clears throat> you might want to do a city analysis or a zip code analysis depending on your geographic uh, spread. You do a city analysis of all of the classes for one year. You're going to look at all of 2013. So this will tell us for the entire 2013, every city, and I've got our 7, 700 people from a national conference, so they're kind of scattered all over. Small numbers, onesie, twosie, onesie, twosie, onesie, twosie. But this gives you the baseline for every student in your system, which communities are generating the enrollments. And this particular report gives you the city, how many people are from the city, registrations from the city, the dollar amount of the city, and the average course fee for the city. I put in this hypothetical national conference that had a fee of $695, so the average course fee was the same course fee for everybody from these particular places. Okay, this would be a global analysis for your term. All right, so what we're going to do now, go back and run that report only we're going to define the data a little tighter. So we're going to go back to city. Now we're going to do, and I probably didn't do that. Course number begins, and let me see if this covers what I want. Course subject code begins. All right, let me add that. Subject code, I'm going to add a year and a subject code. So we're going to edit our filter. I'm going to add the course number begins with, and begins with their matches, ask later. Okay, what I've done is modify that, and we're going to say subject code and, and course number. So I'm doing it. Again, if you're a student manager user and you do this, if you go in and edit the contents of a query, make sure that you update the title of that query so the next person down the road 
uh, will not get messed up by that. So now we're going to only look at A square subjects. <clears throat> we want to just look at the A square content classes, and we're going to look at 2013. But the point is, once you have your total demographics, then you could go in topic by topic, uh, content area by content area, department by department, if you program that way, and determine, well, of the total group, what is the demographic makeup of just the people who took ACEWORK programs? <clears throat> and so that's telling us that, well, I've got Hollywood, California, Washington, D.C., and Manhattan, Kansas, McFarland, Kansas. Those, well, obviously, 42 isn't an end you're going to go to the bank on. But yeah, hopefully you get that idea. Um, all right, uh, questions, comments on what we're doing so far here. Lori, we doing good? Everybody just tickled as a clam? I believe so. <laughs> all right. So that is the demographic analysis. The other side we talked about was doing, now I'm going to go back. Actually, I want to, before I go to the course side, I do want to give a shout out to one other one. And again, for student manager users, there is a new set of reports out available within the mailing label area that allows you to do zip code radius and ge geospatial mapping. This is a hot topic now, and again, if you've got a large geographic area or you've got a large area that you're serving, and you really want to try to narrow in on data clusters, location clusters, it's a great tool to do that. I'm going to illustrate both of these at one time and kind of talk about them as we go through. So we're in the mailing label. I built this report in mailing labels. I'm going to modify so that ACEWARE users can see exactly what we're using here. Modify report, additional reports. We're going to go for, again, our, uh, we're going to look at a specific conference. Suppose I had this continuing ed conference, and I wanted to offer a class in Manhattan, Kansas, and I figure I can go out 150 miles from Manhattan and market this program to, because it's a one-day course, yeah, probably not going to have a lot of people fly in for a one-day program. So there is my group. I'm going to take everybody who attended that conference, only I'm going to use the zip code radius to scope only people within 150 miles of my location. And this is the, this is the geospatial, the zip code radius tool. You enter in the zip code that you want to aim as your ground zero, and then you say, how many miles out do I want to go to be able to look at names? Now, I'm going to have a show of hands, because I can watch you guys. I'm watching to see if you're paying attention. This is like Santa Claus now. Raise your hand if you are an ACEWARE user and if you've used the zip code radius selector. I want to see if anybody's discovered that. We've got a couple. Susan Stinson. Great. Brett. Uh, folks there, good, 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 good. We got a handful. I didn't get a count on those. But if, if you're doing marketing and you want to do some, again, targeted by a geographical area, it's a great way to do this. Okay, so we're going to continue. <clears throat> and that will basically pull out of that national list from the conference only the people who are from 150 miles. And we're looking now at the this is the function that you add to the uh, report to give you your zip code radius tool. We actually have a report in the report resource area. And if you haven't been there, let me take you there. Aceware systems, hang on. Lori, refresh working better now? Oh, much better, yeah. Oh, good, yeah. good, good. Okay, so for customers, if you go student manager resources, Go down to uh, reports, guides to reports. Um, now, I take that back. Tools, tools for the download. You're going to find here the mapping zip item and the um, where is zip radius. These two files you can download, just paste into your manager folder and then you can add those two elements to your um, 
to your report. So it was just do it, zip radius. That would be done typically with a just do it because that happens before the class starts. And then the mapping is just after mapping. And again, if you've never done modifying reports, um, contact your tech and he can actually send you a model report that you can just import into your system and this will be done for you. So again, give your technician a call and uh, they can give you that report. All right, let's close the report. Yeah, I didn't want to do anything to the report. So here are the names. And again, 150 miles of Manhattan, Shawnee Mission, Manhattan, Wichita. These are bona fide addresses within 50 miles. So when I close the report, it's now asking us about mapping. Do you want to map by name or by firm? We're going to go by name. And this is kind of cool if you've not seen this. It brings up Bing Maps. So this is the Bing mapping tool. You have to remember, and I sometimes forget this, in order to start the process, there is a little go down here, hit the go button, and pretty soon there are the pinpoints. It's starting to drop these on. And over here is your zoom in, zoom out. So these are the pinpoints of where these people are located within 150 miles of Manhattan, Kansas. The cool thing about this, if you're actually looking for names, you can hover over the pin, it's High Rebel, Gale, Chuck, uh, you can actually see the names of the people who are at that particular location. Um, and again, really a great way to really drill down to find out what your, ge what your participation is. Oh, I hit go again. I, you don't do, go continues to reset the pins, the X close. This is actually a kind of a browser window that it brings up for you. You do have to be able to get on the internet in order to, uh, to run this. All right, um, the, the marketing reports, we've done the mapping, we've done the marketing analysis, we've done the demographic analysis of the individual. The other one that we want to do, and this is, come to me now. The other one we want to do, where's my shift tab business here? I, I Hang on a second. I'm getting far ahead of myself. Alt tab. There we go. Get back to student manager here. Is the course analysis. So under statistics, course code analysis, course data summary. One of the options you can do in this is analyze your classes by any element about the course. So if you have subject codes assigned to a class, um, we're going to do an analysis of the subject codes and how they performed for the past year, which is, should correlate to your should correlate to your content. So what this report, this is the course summary report, analysis report will tell us is for each subject that we assigned, and I'm going to go ahead and bring up, we're going to bring up a, let me bring up a class here, um, view X days out, just to show you what we're talking about. Now again, for those of you that haven't used the F2 key in ACEWARE, the F2 key in Student Manager actually lets you bring up a class, look up a class, get a quick list of classes right in the middle of running a report, and that's what I just did here. My point is, is that what I wanted to show you was that the subject code on the course screen is what we're talking about in terms of the report here. And again, as far as a basic marketing element, if you're not using subject codes on classes, you really make sure you need to do that because that gives you all kind of benefits in the system. All right, let's close this out. And we're right back to the report. <clears throat> now, so what that's telling us is all of the classes that were ACEWARE classes, we offered 27, we canceled three, 8% cancellation, how many enrollments, uh, the average enrollment, that's not the very good class enrollment, average course fee, income, and what the net income is by program area. So this is really your financial analysis, which you ought to be doing independent of marketing, your dean, director, program manager, if you're responsible for an area, 
you're going to want to know how your programs are doing and how you might uh, do a better job of either building them out or doing a better job of marketing or uh, if you're really not generating any income, you need to see about just getting rid of those. All right. Um, I believe at this point, then, let's kind of see how we did. So, so let's take a look in the rearview mirror. We talked about trying to dispel the myth about needing to be an uber genius or a, uh, you know, a PhD from Stanford in order to do marketing. We try to get you started with understanding that it starts with the data, capturing the data. We talked about the source code on the name, the tracking code on the registration, looking at those tracking code numbers, trying to look at where your students are coming from. Um, we've talked about the reports. And again, uh, the process of doing marketing analysis is really a lather, rinse, repeat. You basically look at your data. You adjust your marketing. You try to pick what worked. You try to reduce what didn't work or to identify if there was a problem with the way you pulled, put it out, how you can make it better, and go back and do it again. Uh, so I, I've got a, a three-year-old grandson, uh, Zachary, whom, whom Jack, who Lori knows. You know, when we're playing and I'll toss him up in the air, he, he'll say, do it again, do it again, do it again. And again, hopefully, if you do a good job of tracking your marketing, you're going to be able to get more dollars returned from your marketing budget, and you're going to be out there. Your dean, your director is going to be saying, do it again, do it again. You know, so... That's what we're about. So, all right, questions. Any questions coming, Lori? Any people got? We again, if some of you mentioned other in the measurement side, send a note to Lori about some of the ones that you have used of way of tracking uh, or techniques that might be useful for other people. That's actually one of the questions I was going to ask, and one of the first ones because we've got several people that said, "Hey, fifty-four percent of you said you're using something else. What are you using?" Okay. So, if you are one of those 54 percent, clue us in so that we yeah. Know what what on. technique are you using? Uh, are you using some commercial system? Um, let us know. Any other uh, questions related to the reporting or related to using the tracking codes and how those might work? We'd like to see that last report again so that we can get a. a um, oh shoot! That was the one on. Which one, Lori? I, I, the last report. I, uh, subject I, codes. Subject codes. Okay. Now that report came out of statistics course, course data summary. Okay, everybody with me now? Statistics course, course data summary. Now, uh, and this is the area where you can again pick any uh, course area and run a report. Now I'm gonna while we're here, I'm gonna show an alternate style report under this that is called the monthly performance report. And to me, it's a key one. It should be in your system. If not, we'll send it to you. Uh, so again, what you can do is do it for a particular time frame. This is the same reporting area, different report. This is called the course summary by month. Now what this will do is show you the category, and again, we chose to do this by subject, and it's showing us over the lifespan of a year because we used as our filter to determine what data to report, we used a 12-month period. It tells us every month how many classes we offered in the ACEWAR topic area, how many were canceled, what the enrollment was. This is the number. I'm going to make it, this is so darn important. This is the number that is the one that tells, nope, ah, hang on, erase that, wrong line. Percent capacity. The airline business depends upon butts and seats. How full are the airplanes? This is your, how full is your airplane? If you are running classes in an area and you only have based on capacity, and obviously if you've got, uh, you know, limited classrooms, or you at least make, make an estimate of what your estimated size of that class is going to be. If you're running classes and only getting 3% or honestly anything less than 50 to 70% of the capacity in your class, 
you either need to reduce the number of offerings or look at maybe it's a seasonal thing. Maybe they go better in November and December rather than in February, March, April. Uh, this is the kind of data where looking at your data, thinking it through, why would business classes have, zero, well, I'm not offering classes. Again, my, this is dummy data, guys, so don't, don't take this to the bank. But again, this summary by month, do it by subject matter. You could do it by location if you wanted to look at what locations you use. Again, elements about this class and try to analyze how you might do it better. Okay, Lori, I, I went off on a tangent, but uh, other questions coming in. What are people saying about those other categories? Uh, they're saying they manually tally information. Okay. Which, wow. Yes, oh. please stop oh. doing that. <laughs> oh, well, if you're an Aceware user, I certainly hope not. If, you have, if you're not an Aceware user, come on down. We'll show you a better way. So, oh, so manually, any other technique, techniques? Uh, several people fessing up that they don't do anything. Mm, okay, well, uh, well, but that's that. Then you, the, your response is none of the above. But anyway, okay. Well, I uh, uh, again, I always when I'm at a, a training, I always say, well, it, the only reason you need to, if you don't, how do you say, you don't have to worry about marketing tracking if you have a blank check for a marketing budget. Now, most people don't, so that means ergo, you really ought to be paying attention to this. <laughs> Other questions, uh, topics, things that people want to cover. Uh, so that we have not. Several student manager users would like to know if they can make tracking a mandatory field in AceWeb. In AceWeb. I really. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and answer that one for Go you. ahead, fire away. Yes, we can. But it does not work in all browsers. So get with your tech and we'll, you can at least capture some. Uh, we're set up for the larger browsers, but not for everybody. That's not a perfect system. I, I have a bit of I have a bit of a dilemma, and again, one of the one of the downsides about making it required on the web is that the more things you make required, and this is that dance, the more onerous it is on the part of the student because if they really don't know, uh, then they're liable to pick a question just to get the heck out of dodge and give you the wrong information, and so. I would almost say I would rather get a little information that is good than to get a lot of information, half of which is wrong. And, and again, this is, um, I, I, again, the idea of beating people over the stick or over the head with the stick it, to me is not good. And that ditto, that, that goes double ditto with the staff side. I, and let me get back out of this. Uh, people say, well, I want to be able to make uh, the, the, let me clean my screen. I want to be able to make the source code required on the person record. I want to make the source code required on the, on the name record or on the, on the registration. I would rather you work at doing this on the basis of performance analysis. Make this a reportable thing to your staff. And I, we even have a report that does that under cash box, deadbeat. I believe we've got a report on registrations by creator percentage track. So uh, again, this is under the deadbeat area. If we wanted to look at 2013 again, due and paid, we're running the report, we're going to go to registrations by creator, and I've got to get a logo in here. So this tells us, uh, okay, let's take a look at this. Here's the user, Mr. Ace, entered 59. Now look at, look at these. Look at my staff, Lori, how well they did. Well, when you fake data, it, it's pretty easy to, to show that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Send, <laughs> send, send chocolates. But the idea is if you are trying to encourage staff when you're doing walk-in or manual registrations, uh, I can send you this report. I don't remember if it's in the, um, the user-defined reports that go out to new customers. But if you'd like this report, send Lori or I an email and we'll mail this to you. But you can run this and it'll basically let you, you print this out every month and hand it out to all staff. You don't even have to make a, um, you don't even have to make a comment because staff, it's the old Hawthorne effect for you operations management 
uh, professionals out there. Paying attention to a piece of data will always raise the score on that data. And so if people know, your staff know that you're going to be evaluating how many registrations they try to capture a tracking code for, they will increase that number for you. And uh, we joke about that uh, the three W's of uh, marketing tracking, the will, the way, and the WANDA. Well, the WANDA is your staff person. This is how you can keep WANDA on track. All right, other questions? I'm, I'm, I'm getting a feel, Lori. OK, we're, we're right at the witching hour. I have one more question I want to ask. And I will tell people that we are going to post the recording in the PowerPoint yeah. tomorrow, so if, if they would like to watch again. Uh, what do you think is the best information to capture? Um, the, the best information to capture, well, number one is the, uh, the, the number one. The number one and the number two. Number one is that you keep, now I wanted to give a shout out to the annual conference. We've got even a website 2014, but let me get back to manager. The two big things are when you're doing classes, make sure you put in your subject code. That's, that's, that tracks what type of programs people take. The other thing is then that on the registration record, on the, on the name and the registration record, that you track the source code and you track the, give me, give me, give me this up here. Hang on a second. We'll get back into the tracking. You track the source code, source code and tracking code, interest code, subject code, source code, tracking code. Those are the big two. All right, Lori, anything else? Listen, uh, thank you much, everybody, for attending. Uh, again, we've got guests here. Um, again, if you're not an Aceware user, you'd like to learn more about it, go to our website, aceware.com. Uh, again, for current Aceware users, again, a lot of the information that we talked about uh, in the system is in the customer support area. We've got the webinar archives, which talk about the marketing. Uh, we've got the customer support. A lot of good stuff there. And all else, of course, contact your technician. They'll be happy to help you out. Lori, you all have a very merry uh, Christmas and a happy holidays. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Stay warm. And we're going to be taking a break from webinars until 2014. So have a good holidays, everybody. See you in the new year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.